Before we get started, before you get into this, just know that there's almost two hours of video here. So if you have ADHD, this probably isn't the video for you. So let's take a look at the boat here. He's got a little nose rub. And it looks pretty good on this. Oh no, what is that? That's a scratch. Let's see. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, I think I can take these this part out fairly easily. Uh, this big one though, yeah. You can hear it when you go over it. So that one's a little deeper than most. I might be able to at least bring some color back. You might see some three-dimensional, you know, kind of a, a valley where it used to be. Uh, minor scuffs, nothing major. This is just plastic transfer from a dock. Although it looks like he tagged it quite a few times going down. There is some substantial water spot oxidation where the water spots have sat on here and been burned in. And it looks like maybe down here he got you got some waxing going, um, but of course up here where the emblems are, it, it's slacking. And back here on this back corner, the shoulders, you can see that it's rather dry. In fact, here I'll take some oil from the side of my nose and put it in there. You can see that there is color, but you have to get it wet in order to see it. By the way, there's a ton of wind noise, so while I'm doing this, I might... Uh, I might record everything, but I won't talk to the camera. There's just way too much wind noise, and the little wind noise reducer that I have doesn't work all that well. So I'll probably be doing voiceovers. Yeah, see the dust and everything from the wind? It sucks. The white, as you can see, has a reflection. I don't have to really dig too much down into that. I will hit it with heavy cut just to pop it a little bit. The top needs a little bit of love. It's got all sorts of holograms and swirls. This looks like a factory finish, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Cobalt isn't alone. A lot of factories have people at their factory who just pick up a buffer and grind off the uh, mold release agent off the gel coat, and they call it shiny. So you get kind of all these micro stars everywhere through the gel coat. So you know me, I will be fixing that, and I'll show you how to do that. So sit back, relax, grab a beer. I brought four, just in case. It is a warm day, but I thought maybe if somebody showed up and I wanted to talk to them, I could hand them a beer. So that's what those are for. Anyway, I'll talk to you in a bit. So let's pretend that you took the cover off of your boat, and one side doesn't get the sun, and the other side definitely does. Well, difficult to see. There you go. You can see it now. So this side definitely gets the sun, and what I want you to notice is the uh, gunnel, the rub rail. I want you to notice that on the port side, it's white. However, on the starboard side, it's got some color to it. And unfortunately, that color travels down the entire length of the boat. And the owner's asking me what he can do to fix that. This comes because your cover has bled into your rubble gun gunnel, your rub rail. Sometimes there is some abrasion you can do with maybe some sandpaper and clean that up. Uh, sometimes FSR, fiberglass stain remover, has a tendency to pull some of that color out. You could also try maybe take some uh, gel bleach, and if you can put it specifically, and I mean specifically, not, don't let it run over or anything, put it specifically on the, on the gunnel and see if that pulls the color out. Other than that, you're just kind of stuck with it. It is what it is. Now, you can change covers, and I don't know what it is about these covers that has a tendency to do that. Um, this is a common uh, sunbrella material. On occasion though, maybe whatever wax was put on here last or from the factory got pressed down with the cover and it just sat there and cooked. Anyway, some of the, some of the tint has come out and there's not much I can do about this. I apologize, I know you guys want an answer, but there, there really isn't one. It's just boats. Sometimes things happen. Now, on a more important note, let's take a look at this freaking giant jumping spider. And I mean giant. For a jumping spider, this guy's huge. I'm going to zoom in here because he's worth it. Jumping spiders usually don't get this big and they certainly don't have big orange marks on their backs. Which this one does, which is kind of cool. All right, now at the bottom of the screen here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see some transfer rubs, transfer marks from hitting a dock or hitting a piece of PVC or something. The plastic just kind of rubbed off. Now, 
there's no reason at all that Super Duty and a buffer wheel can't get that. However, because it's on a corner, it means that that round wheel that you've got with the compound, the abrasives, sitting on a corner, all that force is multiplied, amplified, and concentrated right in that corner. So if you're hitting this with a buffer and compound, if you're, if you're good at what you're doing, you're only going to take off the transfer and you're not going to rub through the gel coat. But because this is YouTube, and I don't know how dumb you guys are, I'm going to suggest if you've got a mark on the edge, take some acetone, put it on a rag, saturate the tip of the rag, and then run back and, oh my god, it's gone. It's a miracle. And I didn't risk pulling off a whole bunch of gel coat having a white spot here on the side of your boat. Continuing forward, I've already hit this with Super Duty. I'm going to push on through, getting into the emblems. As soon as I get through the, uh, the oxidized parts, I'll probably come back with some heavy cut. Okay, so I've actually gotten up to pretty much where the Super Duty bottle is with Super Duty, just Super Duty. Um, today was hot enough that my phone actually lost itself as it was sitting in the sun. So you didn't see any of this. All you saw was this, which is cool. I mean, the perfected EXAC is a neat demo. And to remind you, it can get out stuff like this. So the reason I'm taking a little pause here is to explain that while it was hot enough to basically cook my phone, it's about to get wet enough that it might actually void the warranty. So, All right, so what I'm going to tell you now is not going to be too beneficial to you, except for the fact that uh, you'll now know it. The black and the yellow and the bottom uh, white have been hit with heavy cut after this area was hit with Super Duty. Um, and even though I was able to get around these letters with the wheel, there are some areas in here, you can see them kind of in the crooks of the corners there, that the wheel just can't get, and it's never going to. You know, worst case scenario is this corner of the B right there. A wheel can't really ever get in there. A brand new wheel can sometimes get in that, but it wouldn't be able to get in that, 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 or that, or that, or that. So, what do we use? Um, I have found that either a random orbital like this with either a stiff foam pad, something kind of, I don't know why that just zoomed in. Sorry. So, a stiff foam pad uh, meant for compounding. They're usually white, although if you're doing cars, they're orange and green or whatever. Um, but I've also found that a microfiber... Um, soft foam pad can actually do quite a bit to get in those nooks and crannies and when i get to the perfected stage i will show you that uh, speaking of the perfected stage i am just about there but i wanted to stop and show you if i can find it there it is you guys see the scratch it's right in there you can probably see it right about there over the power cord all right so this has been heavy cut after the super duty i just want to see what it looks like after it's Kind of wiped up. So you can still see it. I'll get really close and try to focus on it. Nah. Anyway, she's there. And there's not much more I can do. I'm going to hit it again when I get to the perfected stage. Um, but it's black and it's not poking out at me. It's not saying, hey, I'm a giant scratch and you should take a look at me. And that's kind of the problem or uh, the, kind of the solution that most people will get to is that you just get to the point where you can't see it anymore. You know it's there. The boat knows it's there. But none of your friends that don't have boats know it's there. So go. Just get it to the point where you can't see it and you'll never think about it again. All right. So I'm going to get back into this. I'm going to start off uh, on the back, work my way forward with perfected EXAC. Once that's done, I will work up on top. Um... I might film that, I might not. I, I don't know at this point. I know that I'm thirsty, so maybe it's time for a Heineken. <sighs> or, I mean, a monster drink or an electrolyte supplement. That's what I intended to say. Anyway, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, I've got a fresh, clean wool pad. I'm going to throw some perfected EXAC on there. And I'm going to go to work. 
mostly focusing on the black, but touching the white as well. Why? Even though it's got a good shine to it, I want it to have the best surface possible so that once I clean it and put some wax on it, the wax has a great chance at adhering. That's why. All right, here we go. Now, a quick reminder. Perfect at EXAC. Um, it's a lot less work than Super Duty, a lot less work than Heavy Cut, and a lot less uh, product is needed to cover a certain amount of space. It spreads out quite a bit. It works for a long time. So you might see this uh, go quick and you might see it go fast. I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing quick.
So here we are with the Porter Cable. This is a model 7346. They don't make them anymore. So find something that's a random orbital with like a six inch uh, backing plate. Something you can put a little, little pad on. Low. Sorry, sometimes I forget why I even have a camera. All right, better? Okay.
now what I might do is take that wool pad one more time and just go over the borders just to make sure everything's even from you know outside and around the cobalt emblems. I was gonna spur this out, but I forgot I have a clean side, so I'll let this dry a little bit. So just a little bit because we've already done a lot of work to this, so it doesn't need to be massaged too terribly much more. Just a little bit. And if you're being sticklers about it, I should have done the random orbital around these as well. What you didn't see is when I was doing the Super Duty and the Heavy Cut, I already did. So they're actually fairly black. I didn't do this specifically because I knew that I was going to show you. So I showed you. Now I can move on and forget all about you. Just kidding. I remember you were there.
might look crappy right now. As soon as I wipe it off, I think you'll appreciate it. But the sun's not out, so it does not mean no good to wipe it off and show you what it looks like currently. So I'll just keep moving on up. So oh, that you're aware, the line that I'm working on is, whoa, wow. The line that I'm working on starts right about here. I'll be pushing forward, get into the WN numbers. Uh, I've taken off the registration sticker and I'll just move forward with the perfected, get along the white, same as I did uh, in the back. Once it's done, clean it, strip it, wax it, and then I'll work on the top side. And then I've got the whole other side to do. But she's coming out really nice. I like it. And as you can see, there is some uh, yellow definitely coming off, even with perfected. So, just so you're aware. Now the back side of this is actually to the point where I can almost comfortably spur it out. But the front side is still fluff upable. I know that's not a word, but I'm gonna use it. So I don't have to worry about spurring it out right now. As long as I keep the same amount of uh, product on the pad for the space I've got, it should stay like this and shouldn't get all gummed up. This side got a little bit more gummed up because I was doing a smaller section with a lot more compound. Eh, it just gums up a little bit. Anyway, moving on. And if you're curious, the scratch is right there. If you can't see it, good. It actually took me a little bit to see it, but it's right there. No big deal. Stepping on the cord, sorry.
I really, really, really want to wipe this all down and take a look at it. But again, there's no sun, and I didn't bring a big spotlight. So, actually, that's not true. I did bring a big light. We might take a look at it. All right, turning you over to this side. How's that? Is that better? I mean, there's not much you're going to see that you haven't already seen. Stupid sensitive gimbal. All right, one more step. Again, the pad doesn't need to be, it's still fluff upable, so I'm not going to worry about spurring it out. And maybe something to keep in mind as you're doing this on your boat is if you use maybe two loops, two squirts on the pad back there, this is a much thinner area. You're probably at half of the total surface area. So logic's dictating that you're going to use half of the compound that you used on the larger section. So one circle ought to do it. Let's find out, shall we? I just came unplugged, which is awesome.
Ta-da. All right, I'm going to put you guys on pause. Um, I'm going to wipe this down. We're going to take a look at it. Maybe the sun will come out. Maybe the sun won't, but I brought a flashlight so we can take a look at it. This is what it looks like when it's all done. It's not what I would consider outstanding with all the compound smagma sitting on top of it, but I think you're getting a hint already about what it may or may not look like. And I am kind of curious how this is going to turn out. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. And for the purpose of uh, demonstration, I will show you what it is I'll be using. You guys might be familiar with this, you might not. This is the CMX Surface Prep. It's just a spray on, wipe off. I use two rags. Uh, I might spray it on the surface, take one rag, kind of wipe and agitate the surface, and then I've got a clean rag that I then wipe that off with. So, yeah. Okay, sometimes I do neglect you guys, you guys. So, um, I'll just show you how this goes. It's not. It's not glamorous. A little spray on the surface. Set the bottle down in a nice, comfortable place where it's not going to get dirty and stepped on. And just agitate the surface. All this oil and all this compound residue that's sitting on the surface, it just needs to be lifted up a little bit. And as soon as it's up and off the surface, you can pick it up with another microfiber towel. Try to get in the nooks and crannies of everything if you can. And you can feel with this towel, you can feel when you've wiped something clean because it just slides. And then when it sticks a little bit, you're like, oh, there's something there. So wet rag, dry rag. Wet rag agitates. And the dry one cleans up the residue, or at least tries to. It's best, not gonna lie, best to do a full boat compound get it all done, and then wash it like soap and water. Dawn dishwashing soap, and some water, some white vinegar. Um, just wash the boat, get all the residue off, and then dry it. Make sure it's dry before you go to put any sort of wax or sealant on it. If you do that, well, you've gotten all of the compound residue, 100% generally. And things tend to last a lot longer on a boat that's been cleaned before it gets waxed. In fact, I'll go ahead and say this, and you can test me on it if you want. I'd say it lasts about three times as long. So if you just compounded this and waxed it, you could you can get a season out of this easily. But if you uh, compound this and, wax, and clean it before you wax it, you're going to see a huge difference in the length of time that your boat looks good. Or RV, one of the two. I don't really care. So let me go get a flashlight and I'll see if this is uh, embarrassing enough to show you. Hold on. Okay, so when I go around this with a flashlight, I'm looking for dull spots. I'm looking for swirls. Anything that stands out to me before I lock in this finish, I want to make sure that I've got everything out of it that I think I can get out. I want to make sure that I've got a nice dark uh, poppy reflection, which it appears that I do. Let's take a look at this scratch. Where is it at? Okay, it's, it's right in, I mean, I'm highlighting it. There it is. You can kind of see it, but not really. And if I take the flashlight away, boom, disappears. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wax this. I'll be using Flagship by Meguiar's for two reasons. One, uh, it's an overcast day. And I can't tell with 100% certainty when I'm doing fire glaze if I've gotten everything and if it's blah, blah, blah. So just to be on the safe side, and Flagship is a good polish, good wax, I will put Flagship on this hull. Top side, I don't know. I might go flagship as well. Nobody's paying extra for the fancy stuff. Not that I offered it, but I don't mind doing this boat again next year. So, or not next year, two years from now. So flagship will do. Anyway, I'm going to wax this. Maybe I'll show you what that looks like and the removal. One second. 
All right, for the hole, I'm gonna be using Flagship by Meguiar's. It's a good product, it lasts a long time, easy to maintain, and it puts a little depth of color into gel coat for the most part. Uh, I've got a random orbital, same random orbital polishing that I was using before. I have a very soft foam pad. This one actually has some wax on it, so uh, it's dry, but it is, it's got some wax in there. So I might be replacing this pad halfway through the boat, maybe not. Um, to get started, shake up your product, and I like to uh, just put a little bit on the pad, get it saturated, not saturated, but you know, thoroughly coated, and then, well, you'll see what I do. I'm not going to talk about it a lot, okay?
There's good and there's bad news. I'll give you the good news. Um, ben waxing that side of the hull. The bad news is I still have to take the wax off, which requires a little bit of time. Not a lot. It's not like the 1950s where you have to let it literally haze, but because this is a cobalt and because it's black, I am gonna let the wax sit on there for a little bit until it's pretty much completely dry. Um, I'm trying to show you some of the patterns that I leave behind with the random orbital polisher. You can see them, sorry, right in here. Just little wiggles. I don't mind the, the wiggles. I don't always like to see this much wax. If I can uh, avoid it, I'll try to flatten that out before I move on. And you'll notice what I mean by that is it's a little darker here than it is here. This has a little bit more wax on it sitting on the surface than, than let's say this section here. And what I like to do is try to get um, try to get the surface to the point where I can see that there's a haze on it. Uh, and it doesn't escape me that it's there, but I don't want so much so that you can see it from like 20 feet away and go, oh, I can see where they wiped the wax on. So just nice and even. Um, Full uniform coverage, if you can. And you might as well hit the stainless, because why not? Anyway, so I am going to enjoy my lunch slash beer. You guys hang out for a sec. I'll be back with a, another random orbital polisher and a soft foam pan. We'll take this wax off and we'll see what it looks like. I'm not saying that there's sunshine, but I mean, it's there. So we'll see what we get. Now I've gone ahead and sped this up mostly because you've already seen all of this. It's basically the exact same things that I did with the waxing. It's just without the wax. So I'm pulling it off with a soft foam pad, no pressure, slow speed. All you're trying to do is make sure that everything comes off and hopefully it looks good. Okay, here we go. Achoo! Excuse me. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to catch whatever there is of the sun in the reflection so you can see if there's a swirl mark. I don't think that you'll see one. I'm pretty positive you're not going to see one. Oh, whew. All right, well, there you go. Black again, shiny again, and if it's kept clean, it should last well past next season. Now the fun part of getting up on top and doing all this, which isn't all that bad. This isn't all that bad. The only crappy part that I found on this boat at all is the sea decking. This stuff seems to adhere to wax really well. It's almost like a magnet for it. It's a pain in the ass to keep it clean. This is the older version, so it's a little denser, more dense, sorry. Um, I would love to take all these decals off. I mean, nobody needs to see one, two, three, four, five, six, 
six decals on the back. Let me guess, one more over here. Nope, okay. Yeah, I'd like to take the decals off. Um, I still also have this entire other side to do. Oh, the sun's even brighter now. Let's take a look. All right, well, here. There we go. Dead on headshot. You can't get closer than that. Let's see. There you go. I'll even stand further back. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, give you an idea of where we're at. It's a decent amount of ground between me and the boat. By the way, if you're wondering, that scratch is right there. You can probably see when I go up and down the wiggle in the gravel, in the reflection. See it? All right, well, I will hit the rest of this hull and then jump on the top side probably tomorrow for the top side. Thanks for watching. By the way, here's what the uh, Cobalt came out like. It's got a lot of dust. There's still some stuff I got to wipe out in there. But, you know, it does have a reflection in some of the harder to reach spots. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Keep it clean, wax it next year, even if it doesn't, quote, need it, just wax it. And this will be black for a really long time. By the way, Cobalt, yes, I enjoy these emblems better than the big ones that stick out, but there are still some problems with anything that's on the side of a, a hole there. So I, I guess I really, I like these better, but they're still bleh, so whatever. All right, well, we're back. Got the port side of this boat to do now. And the finish is not nearly as bad as it was on the other side. So I'm not going to go ahead and need any sort of super duty. I will start with heavy cut. And if you'd like, you can tell probably where the heavy cut started and the old boat ended. Now, this has all been heavy cut from about this line back. I'll continue that process as I go up. But to give you an idea of what it looks like now, we're... we're dealing with a decent level of uh, decent level of shine here. I think you can see that without a swirl. But if you want, I can probably tip you up and you can see what it's looking like. You are going to see some marks from the buffer wheel, but that's about it. And as soon as I come back over this with the perfected EXAC, all of that will be gone. And I'll be happy. In the meantime, I'll set you up here. I'll probably put you on uh, hyperlapse. Actually, you know what? I won't. I won't show you. Ah, yeah, I probably will. I'll show you what it looks like, but I don't want to. Just heads up. All right, here we go. Clean side of the pad. The other side's a little gummed up. So I'll let that dry for a bit. how much I'm putting on and now you can see how much I'm spreading it out. Okay, now once I've got this spread out, I will hit the edges. Edges in this case are here and down here, so that's what I'll do.
Now I'm going to cross cut into this, up and down, back and forth, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go uh, and do this at least once fairly aggressively, like up on a decent edge, and then I'll flatten out. I leave that, tells me where I've gotten to, makes it a lot easier to figure out where I'm at. Now a couple things, one you might think that that's uh, not looking all that great because it's covered with compound smagma. And you're right, it does not look great because it is covered with compound smagma. Let's see what it looks like with all this, well, a lot of this removed. I'm thinking that looks really good. In fact, so good that if I was a normal boat detailer, I'd probably just think, you know what, I'm going to wax this. And it isn't shameful. The reflection actually is really pretty good. It's not bad at all.
not quite as sharp as I'd like, um, but a decent reflection. So I'll continue on with this, moving my way to the left, figure out the bow. Now I'm going to come back over this and I'll hit it with perfected EXAC. By the way, if you're hearing some flappy noises, I apologize. Um, I'm trying to mitigate some of the heat from the sun. It's not terribly a hot day. It's probably in the lower 80s. But for some reason, when the phone sits here and it's recording and it's doing all that stuff, the battery heats up quite a bit and uh, I lose footage. So that's why you're hearing some stuff because I got some 3x5 cards. Actually, you can kind of see them. I got some 3x5 cards posted up on top of the camera to try to keep it quiet, but you are going to hear some flapping. So anyway, moving on. I won't show you the rest of this. I will get up to uh, speed on the perfected EXAC, so you'll see me in just a moment. Bye. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you the difference between heavy cut and perfected EXAC. So this has all been heavy cut. Uh, I'm going to choose this section right in front of you, kind of between a cleat and a post. So I'll just do this section right here. When I'm done, you can see, I'll move the camera side to side, you can see the difference in the reflection. Hopefully it's dramatic. If not, then Heavy Cut did a really good job. So I've got my pad all cleaned out. You want to make sure to do a really nice job on your cleaning. Make sure there's nothing left over in there. And because this is Super Duty after Heavy Cut, I don't need a ton. It's just about that much ought to do for this little area. Let's try it out, shall we? Okay, same thing as before. We're going to spread out, hit our edges, cross cut, and flatten. I'll leave this line just to tell me where I'm going. I'll erase that line because I'm already through it.
is rare for me, but I'm gonna try something strange. Just a little bit of perfecting. I don't know if the pad's got a vibration, if it's off balance, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna dust this one last time. And yeah, I admit that took a little bit longer than it usually does. Uh, usually perfected EXAC is kind of the simple, easy, don't have to think too much about it, just go through the motion, hold the buffer. That one, for some reason, I got some, uh, I'll call them holograms. I, I don't know if they're oil holograms because they seem to be moving around, but they were ugly and I didn't like them. So if you ever have that, you just put a little bit of perfected EXAC on your pad. Try to happy it up. Um, doesn't always work. The good news is when I come back over this with the wax, you guys know I'm going to use the random orbital polisher, which has a tendency to fix some what people call swirls. All right, so let's take a look at the reflection. Um, left of the white line has just been heavy cut. Here, I'll wipe that off so it's a fair comparison. Okay, so perfect it. Heavy cut. Perfect it. Heavy cut. Perfect it. I don't know if you can zoom in there. No. Anyway, next time you see me, I'll be working on the uh, top side. I do intend to hit the white on the bottom here with the perfect it while I'm working on the black. Um, so I'll carry that perfect it all the way up to the front of the bow and then I'll start working on the top side of the white. That's the next time you'll see me. In the meantime, I uh, appreciate your time. By the way, Mike, and you know who you are, Mike H. Uh, thank you very much for the donation. Uh, I, man, humbled. That was that came at the exact right time. I was actually moving money from one account to the other and realized I might be a bit short. So having that was a welcome treat, and I, I'd like to say thank you very much for thinking of me, and I'm glad that your boat looks great. I'm glad that you got something out of these videos. Uh, I hope everybody does. And if you guys want to throw me some money saying thanks, I appreciate it. You saved me a bunch of money from hiring a detailer. Cool. If not, also cool. I'm here for the lulls, y'all. All right, on the top side of this, there's some things that I have to do. There's things that you would have to do if this was your boat. One of the things is to tape off all of your vinyl. The reason for that is as your buffer wheel is going over, the last thing you want is for it to polish up or impart some color of the compound or the dirt or whatever into the vinyl. So tape it off. If, you, if you're not good at controlling your buffer, over tape. So tape off a good three or four inches all the way around, especially when stuff is flush, especially like when it gets down there, it's almost touching. You definitely want to tape those off. You want to tape off all the uh, black trim so you're not shoving a bunch of white compound into that. And as you go further down the boat, there's more examples of this. Uh, let's see, so I have a little bit more control than I think what most people do. So I just need the, you know, three quarter inch piece of tape. But where there's black plastic or black rubber, I tape that off. And where there is sea decking, obviously that gets taped off as well. On the top side, because there is a little bit of a reflection, but there's lots of swirl, 
I'm going to be using 3M's Heavy Cut. Not the Heavy Cut Marine, just Heavy Cut. I'm going to be using a wool pad, and I'll be going over the entire boat trying to make sure that there's no swirl. If there is a swirl, I'll come back over it with Perfected EXAC. So when you see me next, I will either be on the other side or up here in the front. But for right now, I'm going to get to taping, cover all this black trim, and then I'm going to go ahead and work with the heavy cut. That's, that's about all I'm going to be doing. So maybe I'll show you that. Maybe. So this all has been compounded, cleaned, and waxed. And so if you look at the shape of the little sun there, the reflection of it, it should change right about here get all swirly and starry sorry for the shakiness and now we lost the sun anyway so I'm just trying to clean that up so that it looks a little bit more professional and poppy and then I'll clean it with some window cleaner and put some wax on it I use a random orbital polisher just like I did on the hull and it cleans this up pretty well maybe I can get a better shot over here clearly not all right, well, anyway, um, try this again. So I'm just going for, uh, you know, a fairly nice little reflection that doesn't change as it goes back and forth. And that's cleaning up this. Which isn't terrible, it's just not perfect. Not that what I did was perfect, but it's more perfect than this. So anyway, I'm gonna hop up here get in front of the windshield move my way down here still got some stuff to mask off up front once I'm done with that I will move to the starboard side of the boat work on that probably going from here all the way back see you in a bit okay well you're up here with me now so I'm gonna show you how this goes still just using heavy cut not trying to get absolute perfection out of the boat just trying to clean it up and okay so here you're looking at this there's some water spots uh, like you're dripped down and it got mixed with some dust and some dirt and it's not coming off with a rubber or a rubbing of the finger I don't care the grit in heavy cut is so much more aggressive than a little bit of dust on the surface that I mean what am I worried about that the dust is going to create more scratches than the heavy cut come on okay here we go Spreading out edges, middles, okay? Same as almost everything. Spread out, edges. So let's see, in a section like this, uh, there's some things that I think about. One is there's a curved section to it, right? And getting a flat section is always easiest to make swirl free. A rounded section always adds a little bit of complication. There's also a small lip down here on the bottom. So as I'm trying to go flat, every time I touch that small lip or the big one, I'm gonna be putting cuts in it like this, when what I want are cuts that go like this. So I try to think to myself, what do I do to get that result? And to get it, I have to find a position where the buffer wheel fits perfectly in this uh, 
concave shape. Once I do find that, I just kind of hold it there and just walk it back, keeping that same angle. Now I kind of messed up a little here, so I'll go back to where I started, find that angle again, and push out. Now if I did a decent enough cut, then I don't have to worry about getting up there anymore when I go flat. So I'll do the same thing down here. I'll find an angle that just works great for that. And then forget all about that for the rest of the little section here. Now, I've only gotten this little part here. I still have this to go. So same thing. Find a shape that fits and follow it around. Nice. Now there's a little compound on the top. You can usually just clean that up by going over it once. That's that. Now I know I'm going to do a little finessing right around this little catch for the windshield. So I'm going to just dust that a little bit. Now I'm going to go flat. Or at least as flat as I can. This section doesn't really allow you to put the buffer flat. But you can kind of get in there. Now before I put any wax on that, I'm gonna get up here probably where the camera is so I can see the reflection of the sun a little bit. I'll clean this off, make sure it still looks good. If it still looks good, then I'll wax it and I'll move forward. Because I've got a little bit more to go. Nope, this way, jackass. All right, so I still have the whole bow to do up forward here. And when I get done up there, I will work on the uh, starboard side. In the meantime, I'll be right back over here doing all this. So, see you guys in a little bit. Well, if you can tell by the wind noise, there's wind. I apologize, but I'm not going to be able to film too much. I've still got the starboard side of this top part of the boat to do, which I was going to get to today. You can see it's got a reflection, but it's not the best. It's not terrible. It's just not the best. It's got some little star patterns on it. Uh, but the sun came out, and while this side of the boat is not in direct sunlight, I might be able to, let's see, catch the reflection with my watch. There. So if you see that reflection, and it's, it's going to be, you know, sun bright, maybe I can walk back and forth. No swirls. Because if you saw something this bright on the side of a black boat, you might expect some swirl. And I didn't have a way to show you the lack of swirl in the last instance where I was working on this, so I can show it to you now. Anyway, um, it's really difficult to get the watch right on there. But I think you're getting a, a sense of what it, what it looks like. There you go. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there's not much left. Just a little bit of this top and maybe you can see again some of the less defined reflection in the top side so this shouldn't take all that long but because of the wind i don't really have a way to keep you uh 
happily, happily watching with all this wind noise, uh, unless I mute it. And like I was saying before, up here you'll see a lot more stars in the reflection of the sun. That's not a really good spot to see it, but there you go. And as you can hear, still got some insane wind noise. So I'm covering the microphone right now, so if I sound muffled, that's why. Now I've got everything taped off that I don't want to destroy with the buffer wheel. Up around here, the windshield. In this area, I get to cheat a little bit. But now, because I've seen it, I have to clean out the gutters. Just part of being an OCD detailer. First things first, I'm gonna clean out my pad using a spur like this. Then I'll get up here with the heavy cut and start from the windshield on down. And again, just like the other side, I'm gonna to try to find a nice little section that my buffer wheel can fit into in kind of a concave shape. Cut that cut this little edge then I'll work in the middle once I work to the middle I'll work down here one section at a time starting at this little vent pushing forward I might might set you up but it's really not necessary for you to see all this uh, but I'll tell you what after I do this I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done okay that's what I'll do see you in a bit okay after compounding these are the kind of lines that I'm trying to achieve it just indicates to me before I wipe this off that the swirl or the line that's going to be, you know, reflected on this is going to be nice and tight. And it won't be a line, it'll be a dot. So hopefully I've got the same kind of thing going on on the top side of the uh, little settee here. And this one was a little bit sketchy, not going to lie. The pad fit really well up to about here. And up here it didn't want to. So I had to kind of... You're going to see a break somewhere in here of the swirl line. I apologize. It's not what I like to do, but, you know, it is what is capable of being done when there's not enough room for a big flat buffer wheel. So now I'll clean this all off. I'll put some wax on it. And I'll call it good. I'll also remove the tape. And then all that's left is a little bit on the transom. Uh, I'm just cleaning up the steps and underneath the... Uh, swim step in the well of the outdrive. After that's done, maybe I will take pictures of all this all done, but really the important things to know are what to look for when you're compounding. And if your section looks like this, now this isn't a flat section, it's got a lip on the left and the right that go up, which is why you're seeing kind of a weird uh, loop that breaks right about there, and it's a loop again, and it breaks. Anyway, really, really windy, sorry. I apologize for all that. Let me get back into this and we'll see how far we get. Okie doke. Now you might see some patterns from the, uh, the random orbital pad, the little loops and holes and stuff. It's because the boat hasn't been washed since I've waxed it. Once it's washed, all those things will go away. And done. All right, so I gotta wash this, do a little bit on the transom and that's it. I'm not gonna record any of that because nobody needs to see that. Besides, everything in the transom is all basically under the uh, swim step, it's kind of dark. And as you can tell, still got some wind noise. So I'm gonna say goodbye to you folks. I appreciate your time. If you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. There might be another video kind of like this showing up in the next day, week, month or two. I mean, there are still boats in the world for God's sakes, plenty of boats. Anyway, um, also maybe if you don't mind, hit that like button, that'd help. And tell a friend, I appreciate that. Grab yourselves a beer and enjoy your week. I'm gonna do the same. Cheers, y'all. There, that's what she looks like done. You happy now? All right, I'm going home, grabbing a beer myself. Thanks for your time. I hope you learned something. If you have a question, hit me up in the comment section. And if you have a comment, that's also a great spot for, for that. Also, if you need any instructions on parts and stuff that I use, it's in the description. So, yeah, help yourself. Cheers. Hey, what are you doing?
It's been almost two hours. Get up. Go touch grass. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Hit me up in the comment section if you have a question.